I'm Dr. John Haynes. I'm the medical director of the West Texas Regional Poison Center at the University Medical Center of El Paso. Uh, what we do is we answer calls from the public at large as well as from healthcare professionals in a 36 county area in West Texas. And we receive funding from the state of Texas in order to be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year, uh, to answer those questions. Poison Control Center may help you. Uh, from the public, we feel questions about medications that they may have, ingestions that, they're, that may have occurred in the home, either a pesticide or a grandmother's medication if grandmother's visiting, uh, or something that the, uh, a child usually found in the medicine cabinet or in the garage. Provide them with a little bit of food and just keep them under observation. We're looking for anything having to do with uh, the stomach, you know, diarrhea, vomiting. What results um, from that is a significant cost savings. We're available 24 hours a day for the public and in truth a lot of our calls involve children, probably about 60 percent of those. And out of those calls involving children, uh, a good half if not more, we can safely manage those by talking to the individual that called, many times uh, the mother or the father or the grandmother or, or whomever's related, finding out what the child took uh, determining through our experience and through an enormous uh, amount of information that we have available to us whether that ingestion is going to be something that's going to require a visit to the hospital, the emergency department, or the pediatrician the next day. And in many cases, that's not what has to happen. We can safely manage that by talking to the individual, sometimes calling back several hours later to make sure that the child and the family are, are still doing well and avoid a very expensive transport, many times by ambulance, to the emergency department that is unnecessary. Uh, through that, for every dollar that it costs to operate the Poison Control Center, we're able to save seven dollars in costs that were unnecessary through the ambulance, through the visit to the emergency department, through the expense of visiting the pediatrician, all of those we can save. Well, if he's having stomach pain and he took that much Tylenol, uh, you know, we'd have to recommend that you take him in to the emergency room or that he, somebody takes him in so they On can... On the cases uh, where we determine it is necessary that that individual go to the hospital to get further treatment, we're able to call the hospital in advance, let them know that this case is coming in, uh, frequently give up-to-date up information to the nurses or doctors that are going to be treating that case when they do arrive in the hospital to assure that it's appropriately managed, to assure that the information we got was correct. We do callbacks to the healthcare practitioners as they're managing the case. We frequently get involved if they're admitted to the hospital in making sure they do okay. And in that sense, we manage to save uh, healthcare dollars also because frequently we're able to avoid prolonged hospitalizations beyond maybe a six or twelve hour period in the emergency department or maybe a full day in the intensive care unit and then a couple of days in the, on the ward because we provide up-to-date information based on national experience, based on our own experience and information from other healthcare practitioners. It's not very often that you get serious cases that require hospitalization. So many times the doctors that are involved in the care and the nurses are not used to managing them. Our exper expertise provides the ability to make sure the care is up to date and accurate and many times doesn't have to be so long that you don't need an extra day in the hospital if you have the poison center available to provide that information. I think it's important well, also to Gilbert, mention that the personnel the here are all trained professionals. Yeah. They're specially trained to sit at the phone yeah, and be available 24 call hours call a day. Yeah, yeah. Before they can you, even begin to get well. that training, all of them had significant experience either as pharmacists within a hospital setting or a pharmacy setting for years before they came to us or their nurses with uh, significant experience in intensive care units or emergency departments. So they are very used to dealing with medical problems, talking to people uh, in crisis like that. With that background, 
They undergo extensive and prolonged training uh, specifically in how to answer calls regarding ingestions, potential poisonings. Uh, and even after getting the training, they take a national exam uh, where they must pass in order to be certified as providers of poison information. And then there's a period of time to where they're supervised by the more experienced personnel within our center. So that by the time they're operating independently, answering calls from the public and from healthcare professionals, they are extremely good at what they do. We were the first in the nation to institute a relationship with the 911 dispatchers and the fire department and EMS systems of, uh, of our city so that uh, if, if you don't know our number, which is the same number all over the country, 1-800-222-1222, uh, if you don't have that on your refrigerator or your phone, you can dial 911 and that call, once the dispatcher at 911 who answers the call recognizes it as an exposure, will be shunted to us, where our trained personnel will then enter into a three-way conversation with the public that is called with the problem, the 911 dispatcher, and again, since many of these calls do not require an ambulance or anything other than our expertise, we will intervene, and if the 911 dispatcher agrees, the person who calls agreed, we will take over the management of that will call back to make sure everything is safe and avoid having to dispatch an ambulance or a fire truck and an unnecessary trip to the emergency department. So if you don't know our number, we can intervene at 911. We hope this will be the model nationally also. Nationwide, there's around 62 or 63. Uh, there are six regional poison centers in the state of Texas, and we're all tied together in a network so that if you call from El Paso, you call that 800 number, uh, the technology recognizes that you're calling from El Paso, will shunt that call to us first so that we can send you to hospitals that we know and that you know uh, in our community. However, if you call and wait more than 10 seconds for an answer, that call will be shunted to the very next available person somewhere in Texas. And if it's a serious exposure that requires a hospital visit, it will come back to us automatically because we are an, a network and we're unique in the nation in that Texas has all of its six regional centers tied together in that way. We are the only one that all of our personnel, uh, prior to being eligible to be personnel in our center, must be bilingual in both English and Spanish so that we can answer calls from people in the midst of a crisis in the language that they're most comfortable in, assuring that we understand what the problem is so we can give the very best advice to those individuals. I am extremely proud to be working with these individuals. Uh, uh, I've, I've, ne I've worked for 30 years in medicine and I've never worked with a, a group of people that are so professional and so dedicated to what they do and it is my honor to be with them.